Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at a recreation of a Royal Navy rating forming part of a landing party involved in Operation Sheepskin, the invasion of Anguilla in 1969. We'll talk a little bit about why Anguilla was invaded in 1969 first. This is all forms part of the larger picture of the decolonization of the Caribbean and, and the decline of the British Empire as a whole during the 1960s. The British administration had decided that the best way forward was to form a three island dependency of St Kitts, Nevis and Anguilla. But this didn't really take account of the, the local customs, the antipathy, antipathy that existed between St Kitts and, and Anguilla in particular. Now, Anguilla, the residents of Anguilla, the, the population of Anguilla were not happy with this uh, move and in 1967 they uh, unilaterally declared independence and formed the Republic of Anguilla. Uh, this rumbled on for a couple of years before it was decided in 1969 that really uh, British uh, the, the, there needed to be some action taken over this and the, the invasion of Anguilla was organised. This was partially based on reports that the, the Republic was being run in a, uh, a very corrupt manner um, which later proved to be be false. It really wasn't the case. Uh, but uh, the evasion went ahead anyway, and the, the, the main forces used were, were men of two power. Uh, and it initially intended that there would actually be an air airborne invasion of the island, but this was seen as too aggressive, so the majority of the forces were landed by sea. And as well as two power, there were men of the Royal Navy and the Royal Marines who went ashore as well. And interestingly, a contingent of Metropolitan Police who were deployed to restore law and order. And they wore a very strange mix of police uniform, police shirts, khaki drill trousers, DMS boots, putties, bit of 1958 pattern web equipment and their police caps. So a real weird mix of police and, and army uniform. And that's possibly something for a future video as well as the men of looking to perhaps a recreation of the, the men of two power at the time, looking at their kits and equipment as well. But the focus of this video is to look at the Royal Navy rating. And that's what we're going to look at now in the main part of the video. As you can see from the recreation here, the uniform worn is essentially standard Royal Navy working uniform at the time with web equipment and so forth and the helmet appropriate for a landing party. This is fairly typical for Royal Navy ratings serving in a, a, as a landing party during the 1960s, so it, it's quite representative from that point of view. We'll start as we normally do with the weapon carried, and this is of course the, the standard British rifle of this time period, the SLR, the self-loading rifle, the L1A1, essentially uh, an Imperial version of the FN FAL, modified slightly for British use and using Imperial units, which of course was standard in Britain at the time of its introduction. Headwear consists of the Royal Armoured Corps pattern helmet. This was standard for the Royal Navy by this point, it replaced the Mark II. It had certain advantages in terms of not having the wide rim and so forth. It was a very practical helmet for use aboard ship, but of course worn here in the role as a landing party. And for comfort's sake, the chin strap has been looped up over the front rim of the helmet, as you can see. Basic uniform consists of the Royal Navy's Action Working Dress, also referred to as Number 8 Dress in Dress Regulations. This consists of blue cotton trousers and a lighter blue cotton shirt, as you can see here. This uniform had essentially been trialled at the end of the Second World War and experimented with in the late 1940s before being standardised in the 1950s. And we can basically see the standard version of shirt and trousers from the mid 1950s onwards being worn here. The shirt has concealed pocket buttons, which is something that would disappear from production very soon. The, the buttons would become exposed on the pockets. And the trousers are of a pattern with the crossover belt design, similar to the British 1950 pattern jungle trousers or khaki trousers, which have been looked at in previous videos. And this is essentially the standard number eight uniform at this time, though changes were coming in the 1970s there would be considerable changes, including a move over to polycotton as opposed to pure cotton material in the manufacture. Looking at the badge worn on the right arm, we can see that this rating is a member of the gunnery branch, in fact a seaman gunner star, as it was referred to at the time. This is a gunner with a star to their qualification, so a slightly higher qualification in gunnery, essentially. This is the non-substantive rate badge, showing the qualification within a given trade or branch within the Navy. If substantive rate were worn, that for a leading rate or a petty officer, for example, this would be worn on the left arm, but there's no badge in this instance, so this man would most likely be an able seaman. The web equipment used is a very basic set of 1937 pattern with the belt, the two ammunition pouches at the front. These are Mark III's of Second World War vintage, as you can see, still using a press stud closure. And these are supported by wartime manufactured braces, as you can see. 
Footwear consists of leather ankle boots, as you can see here, lacking a toe cap, which is typical for Royal Navy ankle boots. And these are worn with the anklets associated with the 1937 pattern web equipment, as you can see here. So as you can see here, it's fairly rudimentary kit and equipment. We've got a rifle, enough web equipment to carry ammunition for it, and that's about it. And the steel helmet being worn for head protection. Otherwise, the uniform is essentially standard Royal Navy Action Working Dress, which is the, the basic working uniform, which would also be worn aboard ship at this time. So there we are. I hope you found that interesting. If you have, I can recommend reading up more on Operation Sheepskin. It's a very interesting episode in the decline of the British Empire. It was roundly condemned at the time. The world's press were, were thoroughly disparaging of this operation. And it really was more force than was needed. And obviously the pretext for the invasion was, was really a falsehood in the first place anyway. And it was politically disastrous. It certainly knocked Harold Wilson, who was the Prime Minister at the time, certainly knocked Harold Wilson's uh, reputation and probably contributed to his defeat in 1970. So it's certainly a very interesting part of that particular time period, that, that decline in the British Empire through the 1960s. As I say, hopefully you found this video interesting, focused on the kit primarily of this Royal Navy rating, but hopefully a bit of the history has been of interest as well. If you have enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, little notification button, and that will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated, as I always say. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to make contact but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.